What you see here is a microscopic image of engineered human brain tissue created from stem cells at the University of Luxembourg. Scientists here think that this bioengineering can push the limits of their knowledge in biomedicine without having to use animals in lab testing. And as you're about to see in this report, scientists are not short of ideas about how to reach that goal. Researchers here are growing bio-artificial mini-brains with a mission. They want to study new approaches to eventually develop new therapies against Parkinson's disease. And not only that. These approaches are based on human stem cells. Most of these stem cells come from patients, so they're in some way specific to the disease itself. We hope that these approaches will help us replace animal testing in Parkinson's research. We have some evidence that these systems represent the pathological process in a more realistic way than animal models do. So we think that we can indeed replace animal experiments with our approach, not only replace them, but also to move the knowledge boundaries forward and to obtain more meaningful results. Many European research institutions are actively studying alternative methods to reduce or ideally replace animal experiments in labs. These alternative methods are typically based on either in vitro systems or computer-based models. It's here in Ispra, Italy, where these budding alternative methods are validated with an eye on human safety. Scientists here, for instance, have confirmed that in vitro brain cells are indeed sensitive to toxic substances. These experiments allow us to understand how these brain cells work and how neurons express their electric activity. It's also possible to measure the effect that toxic substances like pesticides, environmental polluting substances and herbicides have on neurons' electrical activity. These systems, based on human cells, allow us to understand, in vitro, how all these mechanisms work, providing an alternative model to animal testing in the neurotoxicology field. The EU's Joint Research Centre also promotes and guides the development of new animal-free tests, facilitates their uptake and provides databases. What's very important is, of course, the dialogue between the different parties. That there's a good discussion together about um, how we can um, ensure equality, how can we can ensure uh, reliability and robustness um, without uh, um, blocking innovation. Back in Luxembourg, scientists at this lab are using bio-artificial human skin to study the eventual irritation effects of new cosmetics. Some of these experiments used to be done on rabbits. The skin of a rabbit is very different from the human skin. And since we now are capable of mimicking skin by reproducing it in a laboratory, it's much, much more relevant. I mean, it's, uh, it's real human skin. Having done validation studies, comparing data from the animal with this model, it makes total sense and it's much more reliable, much more reproducible and probably less expensive. Stricter legislation and changing social attitudes towards the use of lab animals is creating a clear demand for faster, safer, reliable and affordable alternatives. I genuinely believe it's not a question of um, if but when. Um, I think uh, that we're making extremely good progress on a number of fronts, but there's a lot more work to be done. These new technologies um, are not simply a replacement of an animal test. They are a new toolbox for being able to um, tackle research questions in a, in a new way. New toolboxes in the medical field, researchers conclude, that need to be properly validated to further guarantee human safety.